Hi, I'm Adam Steele for Hot Pole Studios and today we're going to talk about the difference between series and parallel speaker wiring in guitar cabinets. It's quite a complicated area, so as an advance warning there's going to be a lot of talking. Uh, skip ahead a bit if you're just here for the audio clips, I'll be putting the time links in the description. It's been a while now since our series of videos comparing different guitar speakers in Celestian's range for metal, and by far the most popular one of these to date has been the comparison between the 8 ohm and the 16 ohm vintage 30 speakers. Just to be clear, those were two completely different speakers captured once a time with the amp set up to match them properly. The success of that video got me thinking, how much does the impedance of the amp affect the sound and how much of it is the speaker? Uh, truth is, it's, it's hard to say for sure because it's pretty much impossible to separate the two without adding another variable, like adding a second speaker, which would mean changing the cabinet, usually, or changing the speaker, which would ruin the test or mismatching the impedance with the speaker, which would be at best bad sounding and at worst dangerous. Don't, don't try that, there's a good chance that you'll blow your amp up, uh, we'll talk about that more later. Instead, I got to thinking about how to get two speakers working with an amp whilst changing the impedance overall. How, how are we going to do this? So, there are two widely used methods of wiring up speakers in a guitar cabinet, and they have very different electrical consequences. These are series and parallel. For those of you who don't know what those mean, I'll give you some examples. First, series. In this example, both of the speakers that we're going to use are 8 ohm speakers. That is to say, the left one is 8 ohm and the right one is 8 ohm as well. To wire these up to the amp in series, we take one side of the cable from the amp, connect it to the positive terminal on one speaker, the signal goes through that speaker, then we connect the negative terminal of that speaker to the positive on the next speaker along, the signal goes through that speaker, and then finally, that last negative terminal is connected back to the amp. The way that a series loop works, the impedance of each speaker is added together. So in this case, two 8 ohm speakers are added to make a 16 ohm load. If we were going to add more speakers in this way, we could make a huge guitar cabinet, but the impedance would get really high really quickly, which doesn't play very well with valve amps. The other wiring method is parallel. In this example, we're connecting one terminal from the amp to the positive side of both speakers at once, and the other terminal to the negative side of both speakers. This is parallel wiring, and because the work is shared between the speakers instead of going from one to the other, the impedance is divided by the number of parallel speakers. In this case, 8 plus 8 divided by two speakers is 4 ohms. So what's the big deal? Why bother with one over another? Well, for guitarists particularly, Valve amps can be notoriously fussy about what impedance they're designed to work with. If you use an amp with a lower impedance output than the cabinet is rated for, the cabinet can sound quite wrong and not put out as much volume as you might expect. For example, if your amp only has an 8 ohm output and your cabinet is 16 ohms, it may sound a bit odd and a bit quiet. If it's the other way around and your cabinet has a lower impedance rating than the amp is set to, the biggest worry is that the amp will generate too much current. This means it will make too much heat, and extreme heat is what makes amps blow up, set on fire, or just fail. Having said all of that, most modern amps are wired in such a way that they have several options on the back, either on a switch or on several output jacks. Make sure you know what impedance your cabs are rated for and use the right settings. As a side note, solid state amps are a lot more flexible and generally have a minimum impedance rating rather than being specific. So if you have a solid state amp, say with minimum 4 ohms, an 8 ohm cabinet would be perfectly fine. Coming back to the reason for this video, the comparisons. Let's say we have the same two speakers and the same amp. So we're going to use the same amp each time and that's my PV6505. 
It's a vaguely Fender style power section with 6L6 tubes, but what makes it useful here is the switch allowing us to use different outputs on the transformer between 4, 8 and 16 ohms at will. It's worth mentioning that in all the tests in this video we didn't change any settings at all on the amp apart from the impedance switch and we used a radial reamp box for ultimate consistency. For the first example, let's look at what happens when two identical speakers are used but wired differently. This is the Zilla Fatboy, with a pair of vintage Celestian G12H greenbacks from the late 70s, both 8 ohm speakers. Here they are back to back, series, then parallel. Okay, so that's how speakers react when they're identical. What happens if they are different speakers in the same cab? To test this, here's a Celestian Alnico Cream 8 ohm and a Celestian Redback 8 ohm in the same Zilla Fatboy cabinet. Here they are, back to back, series, then parallel, first one speaker, then the other, then both together.
Okay, it's time for a test that's on a slight tangent. Here is my raw box speaker, one of the most popular speakers from our two notes range of captures, <coughs> loaded with a Celestian G12M cream back. This is wired in such a way that you can link a second speaker cabinet off of this one in parallel. We're going to add the 4x12 below it into the circuit. This cabinet is also 16 ohms, so when you link the two together, it becomes an 8 ohm load. Let's see how this sounds with a mic only on the raw box. First on its own, then with the two of them linked together. Based on the feedback that we've had from the previous videos, especially with that Celestian comparison series, we're adding in a room microphone to show any changes in the room tone in each case. I haven't done this previously because usually, most of the time in the genres that I usually work in, room mics are not a help. However, there are a few times when this becomes important, especially in live performance with the sound of the cabinets, so we'll be doing this from now on to show you how things sound in the room. We're pushing them to the end of this video so that we don't go on forever, but for anyone who's interested, they'll be at the end. But with an SE Electronics SE5 in the middle of the room, first mixed in with the close mics, then on its own. Those samples go on for quite a while, so that's why they're at the end. We don't want this to be dragged way out unless you're genuinely interested. So there you have it. Is there a difference? I certainly think so. And interestingly, it's the opposite of what I expected. The lower impedance amp settings seem to be brighter, although whether that's because of the amp or because of the wiring configuration is a little bit harder to separate. More importantly, how much does the difference affect you? That's very much for you to say. But keep in mind, if you wire in parallel, the lower impedance often means that you then can't use two cabinets with the same amp. Uh, let's say you wire a cab so it's four ohms, you then couldn't add another cab to the same guitar amp head because that would make a two ohm load. And generally speaking, that would make a guitar amp go bang. Where if you wired the cab in series to 16 ohms, the chance of your amp being able to work with two of these plugged into the same amp so you get an eight ohm overall load is much higher. I hope you found this interesting. We do a lot of these kind of videos as well as gear reviews, tutorials, covers of well-known songs and a lot more. So if you want to help us out, if you found this useful, consider checking out our Patreon, where wherever possible the videos come out up to a week early. If you could spare a dollar a month to help us out, I mean, it sounds like I'm begging, but that, that we, we try, we're trying to make this channel a bigger part of what we do, and that would really help us. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button because that really helps us grow the channel as well and makes it so that we can make bigger videos with bigger companies, bigger content, bigger ideas, generally helps us to make bigger scope videos. I'm Adam Steele for the Hot Pole Studios and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.
Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here, or check out our Facebook and Twitter, or our Patreon page which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.